that nearly hit me in the face. Do you want to know what this rock is? I'm going to tell you. Welcome to a new series that I'm starting this year, which is going to be called Rock of the Week, right? And each week I'm going to introduce a new rock type to you guys and teach you all about it and how it forms. Today we're going to begin with the oldest rock in Scotland, which is known as the Lewisian Nice Complex. Now, Nice is the rock name itself, and that's what we're looking at here. And I've got many different various pieces of Nice behind me as well that we're going to look at and talk about, and talk about how it's formed. I've also got Yura here next to me, so if you see a paw every now and then flying up, it's just my dog. So, Nice, how do we recognise Nice? Nice is banded. It's a high grade metamorphic rock and it forms at high temperatures and pressures deep within the ground. When I say metamorphic rock, I mean that that rock has changed over geological time. So when you get a rock right and you put it at different pressures and temperatures within the crust due to different orogenic events, that can actually change the rock over geological time. And when I'm talking about geological time, I'm meaning millions of years here, right? I'm not just meaning like a thousand years. This doesn't happen overnight. Then. <laughs> this doesn't happen overnight, right? This takes millions of years to happen due to those high pressures and high temperatures. Metamorphism in geology can be quite complicated, especially when it comes to explaining it. But basically, NICE is a high-grade metamorphic rock, which means it's probably one of the last types of metamorphic rock to form within the crust, especially when you put it at high pressures and high temperatures, right? So notice it's banded. That's the first thing we notice about this. I've got a darker version as well, and I've got a lighter version here. So it's banded, it's separated into compositional bands. Like what happens during metamorphism is the minerals start recrystallizing and they start realigning. And nice, eventually, everything just realigns into these bands. So the darker bands are usually full of like minerals such as amphibole, like or biotite, or 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 just your darker minerals, right? And your lighter stuffs like usually plagioclase, quartz, cave feldspar etc. It just depends on the original rock type. Now this, the glue I say nice, like this piece of rock here that I'm holding, makes up the oldest rocks in Scotland and in Britain as well, right? So they're up to three billion years old. They've been dated to three billion years old in certain parts of Scotland. They're found in the Outer Hebrides. They're named after the Isle of Lewis, right? Which is found in the Outer Hebrides and also the Northwest Islands of Scotland and they sit as your basement. The reason they're there is because they're part of the North Atlantic Craton. And a Craton in geology is just a piece of crust that's very ancient, that's more than like pre-Cambrian of age, right? Which is like more than 500 odd million years ago, okay? And this is what this is. And usually you find that your Cratons across the world, there's a few of them, right? Like they are like pretty old as well, between two, three point, whatever, 3.5 billion years old. Now, what's interesting is the earth is 4.5, 4.6 billion years old, and this is, you know, you can find this in Scotland, and it's old, very old indeed, like, and it's just class, because you can find it in the Northwest Islands and the Outer Hebrides, and I think that's absolutely fascinating, because it just shows you that once upon a time, this piece of crust, which was originally a granite, or granodiorite, I've dropped that on the floor, but I don't care, and that's what granite, granodiorite looks like, right, you get different types of granite, granite usually forms from partial melting of the crust, it was originally granites, granodiorites, right? And it's been caught up in several phases of metamorphism, which has formed this nice that we can see today, formed the compositional banding that we can see today. It's been uplifted a few times as well, and you've had other rocks deposited on top of it, and then it's been buried again, like, and uplifted, like, over and over again. So it has been polymetamorphosed, which means it's been metamorphosed several times, right? And it's just fascinating. It's one of my favourite rock types. It looks so beautiful, so pretty to look at and to study as well. And you can find it here in Scotland, some of the oldest rocks in the world. Absolutely brilliant. So aye, that's what happens basically to a granite or a granodiorite when you put it under pressure, high pressure and high temperatures. And I'm going to like draw what that actually looks like because you might be thinking to yourself, what the hell is she on about? What the hell is this girl on about? But we're going to talk about a mountain building event, which is actually most, in most cases, what forms a nice, right? Like, so usually a mountain building event would form at a plate boundary known as a convergent plate boundary, right? 
So this is your oceanic crust. I'm going to have to hold it this way. Right, you get two types of crust. You get oceanic crust and you get continental crust, right? Okay, I'm going to draw that a little bit deeper down. So basically, your oceanic crust is a lot thinner than your continental crust. It's usually some of the freshest rocks in the world. It's made up of basalt with layers of sediment on top. And what happens is, when your oceanic crust meets like the continental crust, usually it gets subducted under it. Especially when you have like the mantle, which is just like below us. Right, I can't even fucking spell backwards. And this is a crust, this is continental crust. Right. So usually the mantle, there's like convection currents like that kind of like drive like this like subduction as well as there's pulling down because this is denser, it wants to sink, it's going to go down underneath the continental crust. This continental crust, all of it starts like crumpling up together, like and eventually you might have, in, in this case, like you might have like another continent being pulled by the oceanic crust, right? Like, so this has been pulled down and subducted and these two plates are colliding with each other and these two continents are going to collide with each other. And what happens over here in the continental crust is things that were originally horizontal, like whether that was, you know, sedimentary rocks or, or sometimes meta-sedimentary rocks, like they can end up like being crumbled and foliated. So things that were once upon a time horizontal end up all foliated. And the deeper you go within the mountain belt, like in here, you know, that's where you're going to get your nicest form forming. So all of this, like, all crumples up and you start getting foliation of these rocks. Like, you start getting minerals growing. Lots of things are happening. But you also get, like, the partial melting of the crust due to the heat and pressure involved in it. So what's happening is you're getting partial melting of the mantle probably first. Like, because obviously this subducting slab's causing everything to melt in here. It's a cold slab, right? And it's going right into the mantle. And what happens is these blobs of magma, which are usually granitic in composition, like start like it partially melts, like the heat partially melts the crust and forms these blobs of magma, then they erupt obviously at the surface as volcanoes. Usually that's where you get rhyolite in that forming, like which is another type of lava that forms from from um a granitic um intrusion. And sometimes these gran granitic intrusions, once they've crystallised and stuff and they've been caught up in even more mountain building events, they can end up a little bit metamorphosed as well, eventually. Like, so there's a lot going on. And it does get a proper, like, properly complicated when it comes to geology, but that's kind of the basics. Eventually, when these two plates do collide, you're going to have, like, this massive, just, like, you know, obviously your oceanic crust is, is gone. That's your oceanic crust there, like, melting away, being recycled into the mantle. Obviously, there used to be, like, you know, like, I said, there's a separation in here, like, um, there's a suture, like, of, like, the two continents, like, that's your continent number one, that's your continent number two, and these are still kind of moving towards each other, like, but it causes all of this, like, foliation, like, to to happen and you start getting different minerals forming at different points and this is also known as regional metamorphism too like so in your mountain belt such as like places like the Himalayas like for instance like you've had India collide with Asia and that's caused all this continental thickening forming this mountain chain which is known as the Himalayas right that happened a few times in Scotland or where Scotland was back in the day happened during the Caledonian erosiony like 450 odd million years ago, right? And it also happened before that as well. Like um, in the past, like where you had the formation of Rodinia, which was another supercontinent. But basically, you get nice forming, like deep within this mountain chain, right? It's going to form at high pressures plus high temperatures. That's what regional metamorphism is, right? And that's where you get like all these chemical reactions going on. Minerals start growing, start changing, start separating into different bands, start forming a foliation. And you can clearly see the foliation in nice. And usually it forms either like from, as I said, granites, like 
the original protolith of the gneiss was a granite or it could be they were actually formed from like sedimentary rocks like and that's where you would get like a mica gneiss like forming like this one here which is absolutely stunning i love it this is from the scottish highlands as well and oh my goodness me it's beautiful you get the separation of the lighter and the darker bands as well in this too and it's just brilliant absolutely brilliant that you can find these rocks in, in scotland yeah that's me that's rock rock week number one rocks and that you know hi high pressures and temperatures i forgot to mention are like probably you know anything above 600 degrees celsius you put a rock at 600 degrees celsius for a while it's going to melt eventually and that's what the less saying nice has done it's in certain parts it's just a bit melted which is madness but yes nice